Apple Music Classical is officially out. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you from a classical musician's perspective, who the app is catered towards, why did Apple acquire Prime Phonic to make this app? There are some drawbacks to the app. And is the app any good? Stick around and I hope you enjoy this video. The story began by acquiring Prime Phonic in 2021. Now, since then, Apple has been making tweaks to its software and acquiring Prime Phonic to have a more um, easy to listen, easy to use interface for classical music. If you're not familiar as to why this is such a big deal in terms of organizing a catalog, let's say you have Beethoven and you have all sorts of different works by Beethoven, but there are multiple orchestras that perform Beethoven. Let's say Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, like the most popular of his symphony that people know about. If you have Beethoven and you have his entire catalog, there are multiple different orchestras, by the way, with multiple different conductors and variations of that piece. So Prime Phonic and also its competitor Adagio has, have tried to come up with a solution for listeners to easily find a specific recording of a particular piece. And I feel like Apple Music Classical has done that. They use the interface from Prime Phonic and kind of made it, app appleified it. They really appleified its software to make it user friendly. You may see some similarities between Apple Music and Apple Music Classical. It's the same kind of user interface, really easy to use, pretty clean, and it also comes in dark mode and light mode, depending on what settings you have on for your iPhone or for your Apple device. Let's talk about some of my favorite features just by experimenting with the app itself. It, a lot of it is not going to be new. A lot of Apple Music listeners who have spatial audio, um, like AirPods Pro 2, AirPods Pro, um, the AirPods Pro Max, all of those are gonna be compatible with the spatial audio. So any kind of Apple device with, um, with your iPhone is going to be really well suited for this classical music app. So if you're not familiar with the Apple Music subscription, you need to have Apple Music as a paid subscriber to be able to access Apple Music Classical. And unfortunately, it's not like Spotify or other platforms where you can just you know, wait for an ad and then for a classical music piece to play. You actually need to have a subscription that's involved in the whole Apple Music ecosystem. So the, the benefits of having the Apple Music app subscription is that you get Dolby Atmos and then you get high res lossless audio, which is not a new thing, but they have transferred over all the benefits of Apple Music and they transformed it into Apple Music Classical. The main difference is that the user interface is quite unique. So as I said before, there are multiple orchestras with multiple conductors performing Beethoven's Fifth. But I want us to dive in a little deeper as to what is really cool about this app. And this is for like the classical music geek or nerd out there. So, you know, stay tuned. Recently, I've been into Franz Schubert's Er Kunig. And Er Kunig is a song, but there are multiple variations of that song. For instance, there is actually a violin version called the Grand Caprice that is inspired by the Er Kunig song. So specifically, I can go into the Apple Music Classical app, I can type in Franz Schubert Er Kunig violin, and lo and behold, there are going to be different options out there in the app for me to scroll down and to see multiple recordings. That's how detailed this app is. And that's a really cool feature for someone like me who's trying to look for a specific recording, someone who's doing research, or for me specifically, I'm trying to do reviews on my violin podcast, I need to listen to something, and I get to just like really dive into the specific recording. I don't have to spend a long time doing it straight from the app. Of course, another cool feature is the spatial audio. So if you have your Apple device, the spatial audio is gonna be wonderful for cl classical music. Because what I love about this idea is having the spatial audio making you feel like you are in the actual concert hall. And I hope that this actually inspires new listeners to buy a ticket to go see a classical music concert. And it's, you know, there are playlists on the app where you can use for studying, you can use for relaxation, you have like a whole Mozart playlist, you know, you have all that stuff. But more specifically, I hope that if you're watching this video and you're experiencing the classical music app, that you are, um, you know, really inspired by what you listen to and inspires you to actually 
feel this music live because this is just another great way to get your foot into the door into the concert hall experience by having the spatial audio. So you're definitely going to have a wonderful experience based on my my limited testing just you know the app came out just a few hours ago actually of this video when I when I'm taping this. So right now I'm getting positive feedback, I'm getting positive um, vibes from the audio. I would say though there are a couple of downfalls. So when I ask Siri to do a specific recording to play a specific recording it actually goes into the apple music app instead of the apple music classical apps hey siri play Mahler 4 by michael tilson thomas and the san francisco symphony in apple music classical now playing Mahler symphony number four by michael tilson thomas and san francisco symphony so I was actually wanting to listen to some Mahler 4 by Michael Tilson Thomas with the San Francisco Symphony. By the way, highly recommend that Adagio is just beautiful. The third movement of Mahler 4, highly recommend. The thing is though, it when I ask Siri to put it and play it in the Apple Music Classical app, it doesn't do that. It goes into the Apple Music app. So you know you have the same library but two separate platforms, and that is one of the biggest drawbacks that I've noticed right off the bat. And I wish that Apple can fix this with an update. You know, I hope that you can just say, hey Siri, play Mahler 4 with um, Michael Tilson Thompson, San Francisco Symphony and Apple Music Classical. And just the fact that you add Apple Music Classical at the end should trigger some kind of algorithm to help you go into the Apple Music Classical app. Because you can imagine that if I'm driving somewhere to work or if I'm driving somewhere, then it's just like an extra step for me to do, you know, then all of a sudden the apps change and it's just not a consistent flow. So I hope Apple can fix this in a future update. It's, I hope it's like a really small thing. I don't know how algorithms work and coding works because I'm just a violinist, <laughs> but I'm just sharing with you my experience. One thing that I wish Apple can do, which probably may not happen, is to open source the spatial audio because even though it's like such a specific technology, it's kind of like the idea with Tesla. Tesla has kind of open sourced its technology for other car makers to make electric batteries and electric cars. I wish Apple could do the same. And I don't know if Apple is that kind of company to kind of open source the spatial audio, but just imagine what Sennheiser could do with these headphones. Just imagine if they just added like spatial audio in their headphones and adding that technology, to me, I'm a huge Sennheiser fan. Sennheiser's not sponsored, but Sennheiser, if you're listening, I hope I can try out more of your headphones to try out the best classical music app uh, headphones. So if you are uh, listening on like really good headphones, you know, Sennheiser, really good headphones. And if you're listening to those headphones, you know, you don't get that spatial audio. You might get the high res lossless audio, but you don't get the spatial awareness, which, you know, it's a really big downside in my opinion. And again, this is a technology specifically catered towards Apple users with Apple products, with the AirPods Pro, AirPods Max, all that stuff. I understand, you know, it's a business. They wanna, they wanna keep that intellectual property in their own hands. In my, you know, world view, it'll be really cool to just have different companies competing with each other. I think the competition is really healthy. And the thing with Apple is that they make something they they kind of improve it and tweak it little by little, but they don't outsource. They don't like encourage other companies to challenge. I think that'll be really cool to do. Overall, I think this is a nice addition to the Apple ecosystem. Having a dedicated app just for classical music, I think is a really cool thing to have, especially for us classical musicians, always having the conversation is classical music dying and is classical music even relevant in today's world? Well, clearly it is if Apple buys a huge company that is de dedicated and designated just for classical music listeners. I think it's live and well, and I think if you can you know, push the envelope even more, I challenge Apple to make those slight tweak adjustments in the next update, because I think that's gonna make the whole experience way better. If you're new to the channel, if you're not subscribed, my name is Eric, I'm a violinist. I'm the host of the Violin Podcast, and I do violin tutorials, product reviews, and more. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I encourage you to subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you get notified for when new 
videos come out. It really helps me out as a content creator to provide more videos for you. And be sure to subscribe so that when a new update of Apple Music Classical comes out, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much, guys. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have tried the Apple Music Classical app already. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Is the experience really fluid? Is it cool for you? Leave your comments down below. Let's start a conversation in this community.